Test, test, test. All right, welcome back. So, software is eating the world. Software is eating everything, I mean everything. Look around you, smartwatches, mobile phones, coffee machines, cars. Can you, can you imagine current banking and trading markets without software? By Wojtek. Yeah. Wojtek. Yeah, hiya. Full screen. Uh, almost. Right. Um, right. So software is hitting the world. Um, so first, raise your hand if you did commit any code in the last week or two. Yeah, great. Yeah, you are the you are the heroes of this talk, pretty much. Um, and the reason uh, for that is is pretty simple. Like software is literally everywhere around you. Um, you know, coffee machines, microwaves, cars, smartwatches, smartphones. I mean, everything around you is powered by some sort of software. Um, and like, I mean, literally everything. Um, and in the last few years, the, the sort of trend was to start um, powering hardware from software. Um, and what it means really is you can create, you can spin up new machines using some small API calls, easy, easy to use. So you don't have to wait for your infrastructure um, team to actually give you a VM or give you a, a, a say a list of virtual c CPUs that that you can use um, you can like literally start as many as you want and it's not only the v v virtual machines it's much more than that you know it's 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 network switches it's the whole internet gateways DNS servers load balancers, um, the whole f network file system is really, really, the, the list is long and it doesn't stop there. You know, you can, you can buy a single click of a button, you can create the whole data warehouse. Um, so, so you can, you know, again, imagine creating a data warehouse in half an hour. Um, right now you have to, you know, go to different teams, ask for a hundred virtual CPUs, then ask for the network, then ask for this, the, the actual DB admins to install all that and configure it for you. That, that, that will take a week at least. Um, with software, w sorry, with, with hardware as a software, you know, you just click a button, you wait half an hour, that's it, job done. Um, so it, it is really amazing. You can, you can do loads of loads of stuff. Um, and, and I've skipped a few Slides, never mind. Um, but it's it's not only that. Um, lately, you can you can even use a physical mobile devices in the cloud to test your software. So you don't have to buy 10, 20, 30 mobile devices that your customer uses. You can just sort of rent them in the cloud. Just upload your upload your 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 application, run it, test it, see the results, job done. Uh, you don't have to maintain. You don't you don't have to charge them. You don't have to, you know, housekeep them. Nothing. Um, and why why I'm telling you all that? Well, it's simply because um, the smart shop infrastructure um, is built on AWS and. What it really means for us is we can we can scale up and down, we can um, create the whole environment um, on the fly uh, when we want and how we want it. Um, dev environment, um, we only use it from nine to five. Why should we be paying more when we actually just use them um, between those times? After 5 p.m. our dev environment is down. It is shut down. We don't pay for it. Eight o'clock next day, it starts up. Um, 
Um, developers themselves right now in the smart shop team, they know how to run, r how to use the software that actually builds those servers. So they, they tell us or they build those servers themselves, uh, so to speak. Um, which again is it, it is awesome because they they know what those servers should be doing and how those services should be running, um, and they can build it locally, and then we build that in the cloud and deploy it to production in next day. Um, if you want to load test the current infrastructure, we can build the production-like, exactly production-like environment in under 30 minutes. So if you want to do load testing, any advanced debugging on production that happens only after under heavy, heavy load, you know, half an hour, we've got a brand new stack running exactly like production uh, in terms of the number of machines. And it's not that expensive. It really, for having a production-like server for three hours, it will be less than 100 pounds, honestly. It's, it's, it's really, really cheap. Um, currently, we've got 180 servers. And the thing to take out from here is we really don't care about that number. Like, we really don't. We're not constrained on the number of cores that we were given by someone else. If you want to scale up to 1,800 tomorrow, that's fine. Uh, we can scale up. We, we we don't have to buy any hardware. We don't have to wait for any orders to 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 come through. We don't have to wait for anyone to physically install those servers somewhere in in the in the data center. Um, launched this week. So last four days, from Monday to Thursday, uh, we've deployed 110 new machines to our dev 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 environment. Um, Eleven of those machines, 11 of those images, those versions, were good enough for the developers to promote them to staging. And then six of those from staging were good enough uh, to the QAs and product owners to actually push them to production. Um, so yeah, last, f last four days, new six machines on production. And I mean, new machines, <coughs> it's, it's not the code that, that we shipped. We shipped the whole machine. Um, 110 machines. That's if you're gonna ask, if you're gonna tell the infrastructure team today that I'm gonna be and uh, that I'm gonna need 110 machines for next week, they're gonna laugh and they're gonna tell you to go away. Um, simple as that. Um, on IWS, I mean, like we don't even think about it. That that number for us is like has it's it's not important at all. It's we don't we don't care. Our production environment in itself is a living organism, so it can scale up and down um, based on the uh, environment. So if, if, if we've got a lot of customers going in, hitting us, it will scale up to 101 servers. That's the current limit. Again, easy to change. There are no constraints from, so no, har no hardware constraints whatsoever. It's just a software limit that, that that we did set. And during night, when there is no load, it will just shrink down to 28. And again, it's we don't have to think about it. All we do is, when we spin it up, using software, we say, right, this is how you scale. This is, the, this is how you scale up. This is how you scale down. That is it. And the whole rest is uh, taken care of by the IWS. And this is the key. We only pay for what we use, um, and we do not own any physical machines. Like we don't care if a machine has a faulty memory, if a machine has well any kind of faults. Like occasionally we'll get an email from IWS that this machine is um, uh, will be removed, destroyed, um, and we can do it ourselves or just wait for the IWS guys to just kill it, um, and the new one will will start up um, for us. Automatically, so again, we don't have to care about it. We don't have to care about any machines, routers, cables, like on nothing, nothing. It's 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 all in the software. Um, and yeah, my name is Wojtek. I'm a software engineer, 
and we've delivered a smart shop infrastructure as a software on the IWS. Um, any questions? What's next? Uh, in what terms, what's next? Obviously, you've achieved a lot, but what would you like to do next with it? <coughs> like, how far along do you think, in terms of getting the platform you want, you're there? Um, so, right now, the only limitation we've got that we will be addressing in the next few weeks is we cannot spin up, let's say, a MATS environment. So, right now, we are limited to like dev, staging, prod, and pre prod. Um, but in the next few weeks, we want to have a ability. Like where you want to spin up your own dev environment, um, that's fine. Uh, you just you just choose the flavor of your environment, so dev, prod, staging. You give it a name, bam, and and you've got it. Uh, so that will be the next 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 step. Is that like how much you employ for a particular branch or something? And so yeah. So um, the question was if is is that for testing a branch? Yes. So if you've got like a specific combination of different microservices that, that you want to test together, and you don't want to disrupt, um, and you don't want to break anything in the current environments, you can you know, spin up your own for an hour, two, a day, and that's it. I've got a question. So on, hello, <laughs> um, on one of your, your slides that you showed that you've spun up, I think it was something like 110 dev machines in the last week, and six have made it um, to production. Do we need better developers? Because that's only about five percent. No, 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 no. So that that's that's really good. So um, all the, all those machines. Sorry. Um. <laughs> so all those machines. Hi. <laughs> I will pitch them, yeah. Right, to get back to your question. Um, so that 110 machines, we build automatically on based on few sort of inputs or events. One of them is the pull request being accepted by developers, which that automatically builds builds a new machine and, and, and deploys that. But the other sort of event that can happen is we as a DevOps update the way we configure or deploy one of the services and that triggers rebuild of all the machines as well. Um, so like roughly speaking like half of those number would be us making a change in the infrastructure that caused all of the microservices to being rebuilt and redeployed. And the other half was the actual developers merging the pull requests. Um, so the answer to the question, no, we've got good developers. Um, we just wait and test for the good candidates to be deployed to staging. That's good. We can keep them after all. <laughs> so I, I wanted to ask, what, what would you say is missing from that, either the infrastructure or the planning? Where do you want to go from there? And you feel that there's something lacking? In terms of the pipeline or in terms of the... In, the um, in terms of pipeline, we we because we ship the infrastructure, so we we don't ship code only. We ship the whole infrastructure with the code. Um, the sort of downside of that is um, if there is a code change and we have to fast 
ship a infrastructure change, we have to wait for that code to be actually fixed and ready to be shipped. Um, so right now we w there is a very, very strong pairing between code and the version of the infrastructure, uh, which we want to address in the future, uh, which will allow us to sort of <coughs> try to break it, but it's, again, it's not that easy because you want to make sure that when you ship the instance, it is the same version of OS, the same configuration of OS as, as the code as well. So you want to sort of, in some cases, you want to keep them together. But in some other cases, you, you want that flexibility to say, right, I want to update SSH configs on all the boxes. Um, or something like that, but yeah, we've got we've got few ideas, and that's 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 to come in the future. Should should these services be a mixture of dedicated and cloud bursted into, or is the current infrastructure adequate to what we're trying to accomplish in in the long term, at least? In terms of capacity, or Bo both in capacity as well as is it worth the investment of having permanent infrastructure that we own and maintain for some of the services or for just partially uh, sort of complement that um, uh, cloud infrastructure or is this the sole path? I might be the not the best person to ask. I mean, personally, I would go to AWS with as much as we, we can and then we don't have to care about the physical machines. We don't have to, we are not bounded by, let's say, the size of our data center. Um, so there is no scenario where someone gets back to us and say, right, I would love to give you more CPUs, but there's physically no more space in, in the data center. And the only thing you can do is steal CPUs from some other team. Like, I, I don't want to be in that place. Uh, how tired are we to AWS at the moment? If, if it were to disappear tomorrow, how easy would it be to, for SmartShop to um, go to another cloud provider? So in terms of code and building the service, very easy. Um, in terms of all the goods that comes with AWS, like auto-scaling, like um, security, firewalls and all that, that's a completely different story. Like right now, we don't have to care or think about securing our services that much. It's, you know, if, if, if it's good for Netflix, I mean, it's pretty good for Sainsbury as well um, in terms of security and, and the whole infrastructure. Um, but, yeah, the, the, only, the only tricky bit would be how, we, how to implement the scaling up. Building boxes, we can, we can switch to anything we want tomorrow. That's not an issue. Uh, it's all the good things that come from IWS that we'll have to mirror and do some somehow differently. Oh, I'll let you go first. You mentioned that you can use software to make the hardware. Yeah. Um, so am I right to understand that, for instance, if I've developed a website and I would like to test it, say, on an iPhone 6, iPhone 5, Windows Phone, etc., you can replicate that with the software so we don't have to buy those hardware devices? So what you can do is, um, using the IWS um, APIs, you can say, right, I want to get access to a physical iPhone 6 or iPhone 5 or Windows Phone, and I want to upload my um, application mm -hmm. to that phone, and I want to run it. So you don't run it in the emulator, or you, you, you run it on the physical, physical machine. Um, and that's it, yeah. So if, if, if you want to test it, you don't have to buy the phone itself. You don't have to buy 10 different brands of Samsung or any yeah. other um, phone or devices. You make 15 API calls to start 15 different devices and upload your, your application to those devices so and the then test it. So devices are just like on a screen and you run your app through it and you can test it as if it was an actual phone in your yeah. hand. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So you yeah. don't have to fork out a few hundred pounds for each device. The yeah, exactly, yeah. That's really good to know. I didn't know that was possible. Thanks. My question was, how do we handle disaster recovery? Do we deploy into multiple EZs or multiple regions? Or yeah, so right now, 
all the whole 180 servers, the, um, they are split between three different data centers, and and they all the load they, they, the the traffic is load balanced across those three data centers. The minute one goes down, um, it's all fine. The load balances will just load balance um, to the two other data centers, which are physically different data centers. If the whole island gets nuked, um, then we pretty much um, that's it. Uh, but <laughs> but we can we can easily we can easily deploy we can easily deploy to um, to, to to other locations and load balance between different places in the world if if we want to. Right now, it's simply we don't have that much money, or we don't want to spend that much money. But it's it's easily doable. So the IW again, IWS takes care of that. So IWS has um, the the DNS servers across a entire globe. So they take care um, of the disaster um, recovery. So they know that let's say a um, island data centers are down when you and if you've got it set up to load balance between um, locations, they will take care of that. It's it's all it's 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 all DNS based, yeah. Uh, we'll have to check the detail, but as far as I know, it's it's just it's it's yeah, it's all DNS. Uh, how long did it take for you to promote a dev server to staging and production, and was it automatic or manual? Yeah, yeah. So it's fully automated. I don't know. Day two three. If you were really rushing it, I'd say it probably takes 20 minutes at each stage, so you could get the change to production in an hour. Uh, but normally, we there's review in between each one of those stages by different stakeholders. Yeah, so in, in terms of the infrastructure that we provide to the developers, um, building AMI, so building image and deploying into the dev uh, infrastructure takes roughly 20 minutes, give or take. Um, then it's up to them to actually test it, See if it's doing what it's supposed to be doing. If the bug is fixed, if the new feature is working as, as expected, then they click the button, wait five, ten minutes. It's on staging. Um, again, the same history. Someone's testing, approving. When done, click a button, and it, it's it's on production. Oh yeah, and developers. Deve so developers are the one that are responsible for their services. Like w I don't care what's on production. In terms of code and the version, like I trust them that they are, they are smart enough to check with all the stakeholders that it is doing what it's supposed to be doing. That's it. <laughs> Do you want two microphones? <laughs> <laughs> um, this might be a variation of, of what you were saying, but it's I'm a product owner. Um, if I want to launch a new product, do you think I should be pushing for it to be in AWS or on our converged infrastructure that I think didn't it just get launched this week? Um, <laughs> yeah, um, <laughs> we can talk offline, <laughs> but yeah. So my, it <laughs> yeah, I I don't want to answer that question, <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> but, but yeah. I mean, I per I would go with AWS simply because the the. The converged infrastructure is not ready yet. Simple as that. Um, it might be that in the future there will be some sort of parity between the functionality of IWS and our infrastructure, but it's not there yet. How easy is it to revert changes or fast? Twenty work? minutes so or less. Goes in that fast, comes out that fast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if 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 a developer finds out that it didn't work. Clicks a button and 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 that's it. The the other. <laughs> <laughs> so I was going to say we've already built the AMIs, right? So at that point, yeah. it is just a quick launch. Yeah. I'd say I think you could roll back faster. Sorry. I think because we'd have built the AMIs in the previous step, it would be faster than that. Oh yeah, yeah. So the, and the one thing that we want to sort of improve on is the the next sort of stage of deployments is we 
we run two production environments side by side. Uh, we launched a new version in the, let's say, side A. We divert 10% of traffic to the side A, side A. We monitor any errors. If there are no errors whatsoever, we increase the, the load to, to 50%, 80, 100, and then the side B goes down, and then side B is ready for the next release. Then we release new feature on side B, switch 10% traffic to the side B, see if there are any errors, and if there are errors, we just switch back those 10% back to the side A, which is on the previous version of the code. And so then the rollback is instant. Like, you don't like it, you click a button, and from this point onward, all the traffic goes to the old version of the site. Um, which, which again, is, is on our road, it is on our roadmap, but uh, we just, yeah, we, we, we don't have enough time to deliver all those features. Thank you.